What's up guys, I am Tyler Holt and I'm one of the 2018 bodybuilding.com spokesmodel finalists. I'm so happy to be here and doing this live video with you guys. We're gonna be hitting legs today. I'm gonna show you a couple different things, a couple tricks that I do for all my leg days. For those of you that already follow me, you know about my T Holt leg day, leg day, hashtag T Holt leg day. Um, and you know I like to just kind of get crazy and do crazy stuff for legs. So I'm excited to show you guys some. In the meantime, while I'm working out, if you guys have any questions, anything fitness, supplements, uh, workout, whatever, shoot them my way and I'll do my best to respond to all your questions. So we're gonna get started today on leg press. Uh, the sets, we're gonna do three working sets of 15 reps and that's gonna lead up to a monster drop set, which I'll show you. But we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna kind of use this as a warm up. So the three sets of 15 are basically to get us warmed up for the drop set. So we're kind of increasing weight as we go, and this is to gauge where our starting point of the drop set's gonna be. So nothing too crazy, these first three sets, we're getting the legs working, working our way up in weight. Still 15 reps, pumping some blood in there, getting the volume going. <clears throat> and then last set's a crazy one. So. Question from YouTube, uh, what got you started in the fitness industry? What got me started in the fitness industry? Good question. Um, I was a basketball player in high school. Um, was super skinny, but basically after I graduated high school, I, I didn't continue playing basketball, but uh, I needed some kind of activity to keep me going. I honestly couldn't stand the way I looked in the mirror. I was very insecure about myself. And uh, so the only way I knew that I needed to do it to get, to get bigger was to get into the weight room. So I got into the weight room, used bodybuilding.com to kind of help me figure out a starting point and things kind of went from there. But it all came down because one day I got sick of looking at my skinny self in the mirror and decided to make a change there. So thanks for the question. That was a good one. All right, set two. One more warm-up set. Uh, when you do squats, how many sets and reps do you normally do? Uh, that, good question, it kind of depends on what my goal is. Um, <clears throat> squats, I kind of stopped going really heavy on squats. Um, a little while ago, I like to do squats more for volume training, so I like to do anything from 12 to 20 reps on squats, really get a burn going. Um, with my knees and everything going too heavy, it kind of irritates them sometimes. So I really don't go too, too heavy on squats. I think the heaviest I'll go on squats now is maybe three, 315, which might seem like a lot, but it's really, that's not too bad. But so it kind of depends. If you're going for strength, then keep the reps a little lower, under eight reps. Um, strength and power, you know, for power lifting and all that kind of stuff, they typically are under five reps. So if you're going for strength, keep it under five reps. If you want more hypertrophy, I'll stick to the eight to 15. And then the endurance are like the 20 and up reps. They're actually really good for pumping blood and expanding the muscle fascia in your legs. So a good combination of all sorts of reps like that are awesome for your legs because they can handle any, any kind of load because there's a lot of muscles in there, so. Okay, last warm up set. All right, 
This, I call these monster drop sets because I really don't have any other kind of name for them. It's because it's a really huge drop set. So the last weight I ended with on this set, we're going to go 10 reps. And I'm literally going to lower the pin, only one pin. So I started, I'm at, what am I at right here? 235 on this machine. And I'm going to drop the pin one until I get all the way back down to where it's just too light and not really doing anything. So doing 10 reps each drop. So this might be anywhere from 80 reps to 120, depending on how it goes. This is nonstop. If you can do these on, since I'm by myself, the pin loaded leg press makes it way easier. If I had a partner, I'd probably do a plate loaded press so they could just take the weight off for me. But on your own, a little safer to do the pin loaded one. It's a long set, so bear with me. That burn's gonna build and build and build. You just gotta fight through that and keep pumping. It seems like it never ends. It gets so light, but so heavy. It's a weird feeling. I don't know how many reps that was, but uh, if I got any lighter than that, it was down to 55 pounds. It really wasn't going to. So this question is from YouTube. Uh, they want to know, how much did you weigh when you were a senior in high school? I was. And oh, was a what advice do you have for hard gainers? I was 140 pounds soaking wet out of high school. So 6'1", 140 pounds, if that puts an image to your head. Um, one sec. Um, advice for a hard gainer, eat. Um, I come, I, a lot of my clientele is hard gainers because I went from 140 pounds to 220 pounds, but the uh, best advice I have is to eat. And if you're not gaining, you're not eating enough. For a hard gainer, it's really plain and simple. A lot of guys say, I eat all the time. Um, until they have to eat 5,000 calories and then they understand what it's like to actually eat 
all the time. So eat. And if you're thinking of eating a lot, or if you think you're eating a lot, you should probably eat more. Um, be consistent with your, your training for the hard gainers. Um, heavy is very relative, but no matter if you're doing six reps or 12 reps or 15 reps, make sure that you're pushing that lift to its max each time. So you should be, I mean, you should be pushing close to failure each and every set. Slow and controlled everything, really get the muscle fibers working, break down the muscle fibers, eat to grow, get your sleep, um, stay away from cardio. When I was, just got into lifting and I was trying to gain weight, um, I was still trying to play basketball during the week. And honestly, I had to cut combat basketball completely out just because I burned way too many calories playing basketball. So I'm not saying you have to cut out any kind of cardio or all cardio, but really minimize it and focus on the eating, the weight training, and your rest. Do you usually go straight into leg press or do you stretch beforehand? I don't really stretch beforehand. I do foam roll and I do some hip mobility work um, with some resistance bands. Uh, stretching I don't really do till after. I like the foam rolling just to release tension in the muscle and the knots. I don't really want to stretch my muscles out before I get them contracting and activating again. But uh, uh, So foam rolling and some hip mobility work before I get going. Uh, one more question from Desiree Skogan. Uh, how long did it take you to grow your man bun, and how can I make my hair grow faster? Well, it took me, I don't know, how long did it take me? Maybe like s seven or eight months to grow out the man bun. As far as making your hair grow faster, I got, I got nothing for you. I don't know how to do that. That's genetics right there. So, okay. Next exercise is a gallop lunge. This is kind of a different way to do um, your, just your basic walking lunge or stationary lunge. So we're actually gonna do, it's gonna be a gallop. We got 12 reps on each leg. You're gonna stay on the same leg for 12 reps and then you switch, leg, switch legs and do 12 reps, come back. So let me show you. I should've grabbed some dumbbells earlier. Okay, so we're gonna start right leg, forward, we're gonna go down, exploding off that front leg and straight back on to that same leg. Gallop lunges are a great way to add in an explosive movement to the lunge. Now you can do a stationary lunge here and get an explosive movement off. I like the act of pushing up and forward just to get a little more explosive movement in the muscles. Hit some of those type two muscle fibers that really only get activated with an explosive movement. So it's kind of the best of all worlds doing lunges with an explosive movement as far as those are concerned. So question from YouTube, what do you mainly consider yourself, a bodybuilder, a strength athlete, all-round athlete, etc., or do you prefer to avoid those categories? That's a really good question. So um, if you had asked me about a year ago, I would have considered myself a straight bodybuilder. Um, so I went from athlete to bodybuilder, and now I'm actually trying to build back to more athlete. I put so much focus on growing my body <clears throat> and going into bodybuilding and competing and everything that, uh, and I, I stopped focus on mobility work and stretching and those kind of important things that people tend to forget about that uh, I, I just noticed little things like with jumping or mobility work that I used to be able to do that I wasn't quite as functional. So, um, and I am never, I'm not one of those guys that wants to completely lose athleticism. I want to be an athlete for the rest of my life. So. Um, I would consider myself uh, just an overall athlete uh, that likes bodybuilding, for sure. Okay, round two.
YouTube. Mm -hmm. Is there a benefit to skipping the, tradition, or the traditional squats or do you incorporate them in other leg workouts? Traditional squats? Or do you squat or why are you not squatting day and if you're not squatting today, oh, what other days do you um, incorporate them into? No particular reason. Um, if I feel like squatting, I'll squat. Um, other times I don't. I don't. I don't focus my leg day solely on squats. I like to mix it up. Um, so it just depends on what I'm feeling. Um, if I feel like squatting heavy, I'll squat heavy. If I don't feel like squatting at all, um, I won't. A lot of it came down to, again, like I said, with the mobility work, squatting heavy kind of started to hurt my body versus um, feel like a beneficial movement. So. I don't really squat heavy anymore. If I do, um, it's light and it's a continuation of my mobility work, making sure my form is right and, and all that. And I usually do a lot of slow negatives, so like four seconds lowering to the ground or pause squats. Um, there's a ton of different squat variations I add in. Uh, today it was just not one of those days. So this is from both YouTube and Facebook. Meg wants to know what your best lifts are and YouTube wants to know what your maxes are. So what's your favorite lift and then what are some of your maxes? My favorite lift for leg day or just overall? Overall, um, probably pull-ups. Overall, I love pull-ups. Um, what, what was the other question? Uh, what are your maxes? My maxes, I haven't, I haven't maxed out since high school. <laughs> so I have no idea what my maxes are. Um, I don't, I'm not a power lifter or a strong man or anything like that, so uh, I really have no interest in maxing out. Um, it would kind of be good to know, but I haven't maxed out since high school probably. Okay, last set. You mentioned that you don't squat heavy. Do you do deadlifts heavy? Um, sometimes. <clears throat> um, and if I deadlift, I usually go heavy when I deadlift because if I do a lot of reps on deadlifts, I'll start to feel it in my lower back. If I stay heavy, I can kind of I can get it feeling where I want to. But uh, so, but I don't deadlift all the time. I, my Erectors on my lower back are very uh, overdeveloped as far as my back goes, so I tend to stay away from deadlifts, rack pulls, anything that's going to build those lower muscles there. Uh, but I still add them in from time to time for power reasons. So from Facebook, Dylan asks, what type of carbs do you eat pre and post workout? Dylan, good question. Um, right now I'm on keto. Uh, for cutting purposes, so I don't have any carbs right now. When I'm focused on gaining, um, I like rice. I'm not a big potato fan, so I do a lot of uh, rice, jasmine rice, basmati rice uh, for my carb sources. Pre-workout, uh, uh, intra-workout and post-workout, I, I actually do liquid carbs, um, whether that be Gatorade or a carb powder. Um, you can get carb powders on bodybuilding.com, but uh, when I'm done working out, I'm usually not in a, in a mood to eat solid food, so I prefer to drink my calories, so I'll do my protein shake with um, a liquid carb. Okay, next set's a superset. We're going to do a seated leg curl, and then we're going to go into a um, different variation of a stiff leg deadlift. I use a band. I'll explain that to you guys, but... I'll get these going real quick.
little stick. Okay, so this variation of stiff leg deadlifts, we're actually gonna have a band around our waist. Um, when doing stiff leg deadlifts, a lot of people start to lift with their lower back instead of properly activating their glutes and hamstrings. So with this technique we use here, the band actually pulls your hips back so you're getting the right stretch in the hamstrings and glutes, and then it forces you to actually activate and squeeze your glutes and hamstrings in order to lift the weight up. So all you need is just a basic resistance band tied around something. And this is gonna go right at your hips, wherever it's comfortable. So you'll step forward. So the tension of the band is going to pull your hips back till you feel a stretch. And then you're gonna squeeze that band forward, squeeze the glutes all the way through. How do you stay motivated when things get hard? Um, I don't think, it's a good question. There's a difference between motivation and dedication. If I told you I was 100% motivated every single day, I'd be lying to you. I got my days where I feel lazy, um, where I don't really feel like doing anything, where I don't have the energy or the strength. And that's where the dedication piece comes in, is even when you're not feeling motivated, are you dedicated enough to your goal, to your end result, to do it or to do whatever you got to do, eat, work out, whatever, during those times where you don't feel like doing anything. So the motivation gets you started. My motivation was I didn't like how I looked. My motiv motivation now is to continue to build on what I've already developed and continue to build and help motivate, inspire, and everything. So that's my motivation. But... Again, I'm human. There's days where I just don't feel like doing anything or days where I feel lazy. So that's where the dedication piece comes in. I know if I'm not doing it, then that's only pushing my results backwards, not helping me go forward. So even on those days where you're not feeling it, just know you, you got to do it. Even in those hard times, that's where you got to push the most is to be able to get past that little threshold. So from both YouTube and Facebook, they want to know the story behind your tattoos. I don't know if I have enough time on this live video to dig into all those. Uh, I got Batman right here, Batman and Joker. Um, I've got two wolves here. This is Atlas, the god that holds the world over his head. Um, I got a tiger in there. Um, message me directly and we, and we can talk about it. Otherwise, that's a long story to explain all those. Okay, round two. Getting in and out of the band is the most awkward part of that. Uh, question from YouTube. 
do you take pre-workouts and or BCAAs? I take both. And favorite flavors? Favorite flavors. So pre-workout, I actually take the scoop out of the container and put it straight in my mouth and chug with water. So uh, flavor, I couldn't tell you. I don't, I don't put it in water and taste it. I stay away from anything fruit punch though. It kind of tastes super generic to me. Um, anything blue raspberry or watermelon, I'm all for. So these BCAs right here are watermelon and they're good. Those are usually the flavors I go after. What advice would you give somebody trying to get started in the fitness industry? Good question. Trying to get started. Um, first, you got to know, I guess, exactly where you want to be. So you got to write down short-term and long-term goals. Long-term because you need a long-term vision of what you want to have. Short-term goals because it helps keeps you on track, motivated, and dedicated along the road. So have short-term and long-term goals. Have a plan. If you are going into the gym and eating and you're just going in with no plan and kind of just winging it, it makes your journey a lot tougher. So have a plan, whether that be from bodybuilding.com and you follow one of the athlete programs that are already there for you and nutrition plans, or if you hire a trainer or coach or just follow any kind of plan, but at least follow a program and have, and have a guideline for yourself. Um, track your food. I can't stress that enough. Track your food. If you don't know what you're intaking, it's very hard to make changes to progress yourself um, if you have no idea where you're even starting. So track your food, track your macros, so that way you have a guideline, and if something's not working, at least you kind of know what you need to do to make changes and progress. Your lifts, keep your lifts um, periodized. So don't do the same thing all the time. If you have a program that you're following for four to six weeks, or even if it's an eight-week program, make sure that there is some type of progression, linear progression in there, and you're not just sticking to the same thing each and every time. Oh, man. All right. One more round of these. Enough of those. So David from Facebook asks, I'm, if I'm trying to lose fat, do I still mostly focus on weight training or should I focus more on cardio? David. Um, all right, David, so I would focus, I always tell people to focus on the weight training, the resistance training. Your best bet to burn fat is to have more lean muscle mass. The more lean muscle mass you have on your body, the more calories you burn in a day just by being you because your your body requires has to do more work to maintain muscle so definitely focus on the resistance training um, also keeps your body burning more calories 48 hours plus afterwards um, but cardio is a key piece to it as well whether that be low intensity or high intensity I prefer high intensity interval training over anything but um, put more emphasis on the weight training um, and then moderate your cardio as needed after that a uh, question from Heather on Facebook. How do you avoid dealing with cravings, i.e. junk food, alcohol, etc.? Good question, Heather. Um, it's a good question because I have a super 
sweet tooth. I've got a um, weakness for Sour Patch Kids. But uh, it comes down to how bad you want it, honestly. Um, it, it's, a, it's a mental decision to say, you know, I, I don't need sweets, I don't need alcohol, because uh, I have these goals for myself. So you have to have that drive in you in order to say no to some things sometimes. And even though it's hard and you have those cravings, um, it, you'll, you'll be better off if you can just say, just say no, right? What's that? What's that program? The DARE program, just say no, right? Um, but um, if you have a sweet tooth craving, um, I tell my clients sometimes to get a gum that's got a sweet flavor to it. That's better than going and getting something sweet. Um, or for me, I like to add a meal, like the water flavoring into my water so it gives me some kind of fruity sweet flavor and that can um, take some stuff off. If you go to, uh, there's a ton of keto, I mean keto and low carb recipes for sweets, you know, cookies, brownies, cake, whatever that are uh, carb free, sugar free, but at least uh, cure that sweet craving. Um, alcohol, you just got to say no to. I don't know any way around the craving for alcohol or any way to kind of uh, fight that. You just got to, you just got to say no to alcohol pretty much. So, all right. This last thing we're going to do, we're going to do leg extensions, but we're going to do occlusion training or BFR, blood flow restriction training. Um, if you guys don't know what that is, bodybuilding.com has an awesome article on it. Um, but basically, you can get the actual cuffs for it, or what I use is just regular knee wraps that goes around your knees. But what we're going to do is we're going to tie these cuffs around our leg up top. And basically what it does is it allows regular blood flow into the muscle, but it slows the blood from leaving your muscle. And what that allows is for muscle swelling to occur, occur cell swelling. Um, it lets uh, lactic acid accumulate a little bit more, which helps with growth hormone and IGF in the muscle. So allows your muscle to actually absorb a little bit more nutrients um, while there's a blood just pumping in there. So how this works is we do a set of 30, a set of, and then three sets of 15 following that, but you only get 20 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds rest in between each one. So with the lactic acid buildup, this does get quite painful. I ain't gonna lie, but uh, it's, 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 it's really good. So look up that article on bodybuilding.com um, and you guys can do a little more research on it or feel free to reach out to me and I would love to give you some more info, but uh, I'm basically gonna show you guys how this is done here. I guess I could that one the Velcros, but. YouTube wants to know, what do you think of the bodybuilding.com headquarters? It's awesome, man. This place is sweet. These, uh, I would love to have a place like this to work. Everyone seems like they love their job here, which is kind of good. Uh, but I think they, they treat their employees really, really well here. And uh, it's cool, man. They got this huge gym in here. They got like amino acids on tap, which like where else do you find that, right? Um, but it, it's awesome. I honestly didn't know what to expect when I came here. And uh, definitely uh, blew my mind as far as my expectations go. So if there was a place you could work, it would be here. Tightness on these guys, I mean, it, a, a lot of the questions I get on this is how tight should I wrap these? Um, you kind of want a six or seven out of 10 as far as um, tightness goes. You don't want to go too tight because you don't want to cut off arterial blood flow to the muscles. So six or seven out of 10, um, we're gonna do it. Ooh. Ooh. Got 20 seconds rest. 
you guys got quick questions, pop them in within How these 20 seconds. How much do wraps normally cost? Do wraps? Uh, depending on where you get them, they're not, they're not expensive at all. I mean, 15, 20 bucks if you get them online. From YouTube, how many days a week do you normally train? Five to six, usually. What right now I do six, because um, I hit everything twice a week. So I got back and chest, shoulders, arms, legs, and then again, back and chest, shoulders, arms, legs. Do you use knee wraps for squats? Uh, depending, on how, depending on how my knees are feeling that day and how heavy I go, sometimes I do. Not all the time, but sometimes. What is your go-to cheat meal? Ooh. Mm, probably pizza. Pizza, uh, I don't know if we want to count sushi as a cheat meal, because that's, that's not terrible, I guess, depending on. But sushi, pizza, or just a huge plate of nachos, just with all the cheese. All right, one more set of 20. Or 15. The last set hurts the most. Ooh. Oh, get off. Oh, that's the best feeling in the world. Ooh. Who else in the fitness industry motivates you? Or who's your biggest motivation? My biggest motivation? Um, I've always been, I've always been a fan of Steve Cook. Uh, ben Pakulski, I really like Ben Pakulski. He's a, uh, just because of the science and everything behind all he does. Um, I really enjoy uh, watching and listening to a lot of the stuff. He's got to say he's very scientific with all of his uh, reasons and everything he does, so he's a cool guy to follow. Um, I don't know, I can't even think. Uh, and also for new people tuning in, who are you? Where can they find you on social media? I am Tyler Holt. I am uh, one of the 2018 bodybuilding.com spokesmodel finalists and uh, you can find me on Instagram uh, my username's at tholt21 t-h-o-l-t 21 uh, Facebook I'm Tyler Holt Snapchat tholt underscore 21 uh, you can find me on there uh, so follow me you guys are more than welcome to ask me questions all the time I do a pretty good job I think at responding to anyone and everyone that asks me questions so uh, please don't ever hesitate to reach out and ask questions but uh, that wraps up this leg day and wraps up my live video for you guys so hopefully you got to see some some different things some cool things maybe some stuff that'll help you in the future um, check out the rest of the week we got the other finalists doing their live videos um, on some different things so make sure you're checking in all week and then stay tuned Friday night when they announce the winners for the 2008 spokesmodel search. And uh, appreciate you guys watching. Um, again, you guys can follow me on all my social media and uh, look forward to hearing from you guys. We appreciate it.